I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on functions. We will introduce functions in this video and talk about some related important terms. To begin with, we need to understand what is a relation. Every function is a relation, right? And we also need to understand what is a set. So we will talk about these two terms briefly. Remember, all functions are relations. So what is a relation? Relation is a rule that associates each element x in a set A with one or more elements y in set B. And what is a set? Set is a well-defined collection of objects. Well, easy to write like this. But what does it really mean? So let's begin with a rule as such. Right? So we say function is a rule. So rule could be in many different forms. We could have a rule saying square of a number, for example, right? So we could have a rule saying square of a number. We could be specific saying square of a number where the number n is greater than 0 and is less than 10. So we could be specific. Well, we could be very specific in also saying that n belongs to whole numbers, right? So we are not considering any uh, fractions in between or real numbers in between, but we are only talking about n natural numbers which are less than 10. Does make sense to you? So, so we have a rule base which is very specific and clear, right? Based on this, we can have some type of a relation. Now, this relation can be represented in many different forms. So, a set of, as I said, set is a collection of well-defined objects. So, let's say these circles or oval-shaped things here represents a complete set in itself. So, whatever is there in the set will be mentioned inside this particular oval shape figure right so we could write all our numbers here let's say the numbers are 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so these are all the numbers between 0 to 10 and they belong to set a so we'll name this as a does it make sense to you correct now the rule is that square of a number it means that I'm going to map all these elements 1 to 9 in set A with some elements in set B with a relation that all these numbers, right, which we are calling as n, will become n square. So that is my rule. Perfect. So uh, individually, we could say 1 is mapped to 1 square, which is 1. 2 is mapped to 4. 3 is mapped to 9. 4 to 16. 5 to 25. 6 to 36. 7 to 49. 64. And 81. Does it make sense to you? So that is what a relation is. So relation is mapping of each element in one set to the element in the other set. Do you see that part? Right, so these lines are not touching really one another or crossing each other, but in two dimensions, like I will show, they will be like looking like crossing, correct? So that is how we could actually uh, make a relation. So clearly, we have a relation here, perfect. Now in this particular relation, uh, we could also represent with an input output box we could say well this is my relation and here the input is a natural number where n is between 0 and 10 correct and the output here is n square right so basically the relation r is is n square that is the definition of the relation you get the idea so in short that is how we are going to relate the relations but you can very clearly see here that there are many ways to relate the same relation 
we kind of made an equation here, right? So we related the two, A and I should write B here. Perfect. And said they are related with the relation square of the number. So I hope now the things are clear. So relation is a rule. So the rule here is square of a number associate that associates or links each element in X, each element X. So these individually are called the elements of the set A, right? With one or more element Y. So these Y is a set of all the elements in set B, correct? So that is how it is. Set is a well-defined collection of objects. Is that clear to you? Now, we could have represented the same relation in different ways. So we could have written this as set of ordered pairs. So one is related with one, right? And then two is related with four, three with nine, four with 16, five with 25, six with 36, seven with 49, eight with 64, and nine with 81, correct? Curly brackets close. So if we represent in this form, then we are saying that we are representing or displaying in set of ordered pairs, right? This particular way of representing is set of ordered pairs. And what we did earlier is called a mapping diagram. So this here is a mapping diagram. Let me write here. Now there are many other ways to represent the same data. So let me just show you those ways. Same data will represent in the form of a table. So we can write here in the table that our set has in this the elements which we have as X and the output as Y. The elements are 1, 2, 3 and so on till 9, right? We could represent like this where Y is the square of these 1, 4, 9 and so on 64 to 81. Does make sense to you? So we could also represent this in the form of a table as you have seen here. Now it could be there are so many other ways to represent these sets we could write an equation to do so. We can also make a graph. So I would like you to represent the same relation in different ways. So that would be a good exercise. Correct? So what you saw here is basically a relation is a rule that associates each element x in a set A with one or more element Y in the set B. Got it? And set, as you know, is a well-defined collection of objects. Now, these input elements X and the output elements Y have a very special name. They are referred to as domain and range. So let's see what is domain and what is range with respect to our relation square of a number. So as I was saying, a set of all possible inputs in a relation is called a domain and the set of all possible output elements is called the range. So let me rewrite here uh, the set which we had. Uh, let's call that relation R. And this relation R, I'm writing in terms of uh, a set builder form, square of a number. So 1, 1, 2, 4, 3, 9, 4, 16, 5, 25, 6, 36, 7, 49. So these are all ordered pairs, right? 8, 64, and 981. So in order pairs are put in these curly brackets to represent the relation. So that becomes a complete set. Now in this, all those elements which belong to our set A 
which is also called the input set right and output is the square of that number so all these elements which are the input to our rule right so these elements form domain so we say domain is set of all possible inputs so in our case domain is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 and then we have range range is the output right so the the y points right so all the x coordinate points are collected and put together as domain corresponding y points are placed as range right but the order doesn't matter you could write in any order it's better to write in increasing or decreasing order so i'm just writing increasing order right which is better so these elements are range okay as you can see in this particular example the elements which we have taken are restricted right and they're also discrete so this is an example where we have discrete list of elements and they are also finite do you see that they are also fine but we could have a rule where we could have infinite number of elements right so if we have to represent this uh, as a infinite number of elements then we could kind of change it and also write uh, the set as uh, as a relation uh, like this we could say one one two four again the same square of a number three nine four sixteen and so on so if i write like this so the same relation has infinite elements do you see that perfect so so you could also write the same set as finite elements or as infinite elements correct now at times you may also be asked to write domain and range for infinite elements how will you do that perfect so let's take that also in the form shown you could put the three dots showing that it extends forever perfect that is one way of doing it of course or you could say that the set a or the domain for us for example has all the elements a which belongs to the set of natural numbers correct so in that case this is infinite elements perfect so that is one way of showing the relation how about the set b set b we say b belongs to set of natural numbers of course where b is equal to a square and a belongs to natural numbers so we could also write this in a set builder form which i've shown you here right in a set of natural numbers is infinite series so that is called set builder form perfect so <clears throat> this is kind of introduction to sets and how to represent uh, the functions and relations their domain and range in the set form but i would like you to practice a bit and look into some videos uh, on sets right so let's move on and talk about our main topic which is function right a function f is a special relation that assigns to each element in the domain exactly one element in the range that is what a function is okay to really get to this point let's first get back to relations and then we'll try to understand what kind of relation is a function what kind of relation is not a function so one kind of relation is one to one 
in one to one relation uh, every element is linked with just one element So every element in the input set is linked with only one element in the output set. One to one. We could have a relation like one to many. Right? One to many relation could be like this. One is related to many. So, in a relation, if even one of them is related to more than one, we'll call it one to many, right? It is not necessary that each is related to many. That is kind of important to understand. For example, this could be a relation uh, to number of children, right? So, so mother to child. A mother can have more than one children. Perfect. So that becomes one to many relation. Okay. Now one to one is a very uh, common relation and we can give many examples. I will write this as an equation. Let's say y equals to 2x plus 1. So that becomes one to one relation. Right. Another kind of relation is many to one. In many to one relation, many are related to one. Kind of like this, right? So, not necessary that all are related to one, right? But many could be related to one. That could be one of the relations. For example, if we include integers in our list, then let's talk about minus 1 related with 1 and 1 also related with 1, 0 with 0, minus 2 related with 4 and 2 also related with 4. Right. So here, if you square a number, we get the same thing. So many are related to 1. Perfect. So these could be different types of relations and we of course have a relation which is also many to many. Let me write here. Right, we also have a relation which is many to many. That is to say, a relation in which we could have many going on this side and this also related with more than two. I, mean, I should not have arrow like this. but. Uh, Kind of like this. Do you see that? So, so these all these arrows are in one direction. Okay. So, one is related to many, and many are related to one. Do you see? Many are related to one. So, both kind of relations are there. Example could be teacher student. So. A teacher may be teaching many subjects to the students and students will have many teachers, for example. Okay? So we could have many to many relations. So these are different kinds of relations. Out of these, what you find is that the two which are functions are the ones where we have a special relation that assigns to each element in the domain exactly one element in the range. So if this is going only to one element, then it is a function. So that means this is not a function, right? So out of these, the terms which are qualified for functions are these two. This one is a function. Every element in the domain is only linked with one element. And this one is also a function. Every element is linked to only one element, right? So, 
many to one and one to one relations are functions you get the idea so that is how we treat functions in a function we are very specific that if i'm talking about an element in set a to which one it is linked here we have an ambiguity right so so this one is not a function similarly this one is not a function right so these two are not functions but these are functions is that clear perfect so now we will take some examples to understand this concept how to identify whether something is a function or some relation is not a function okay now let us take some examples and understand how to identify if a relation is a function or not so as we were saying relations could be represented in the form of a graph in the form of set of ordered pairs mapping diagrams or equations so we'll take all these examples one by one and understand so let me draw some graph here i'll just draw two of them one let's say this is a parabola correct and let me draw a circle on the other side Now both are relations, they are related some way or the other. So always we put independent variable along the x-axis dependent on the y-axis. I could also write this relation as y equals to x square. And this particular relation I could write as x square plus y square equals to 1 where these points intercepts are plus and minus 1. Okay. Correct. Now both are relations where x and y values are related. You could isolate y value here. Right? So and write it explicitly in terms of y. I could have written this as y equals to 1 minus x square with the square root. And whenever you do square root, you have to write plus and minus clearly. Y is related to x. For every element in x, we could have more than one elements in y, plus and minus indicate two, right? Okay. But if you are given a graph like this, there is a very simple way to figure out whether it is a function or not. We call it vertical line test, right? So, so it is called vertical line test. Vertical line test basically is to draw a vertical line and check how many points does it intersect. Perfect. So if I have a vertical line here, then any line drawn will only intersect the graph at just one point, correct? Not more than one point. But in this particular case, if I draw a line, this line does not intersect anything. Well, of course, this is out of the domain of the function. If I draw a line here, it intersects at one point. That is fine. But if I draw a line here, that intersects at more than one point. That means that a value of x, which is this, is related with two values of y. More than one. Perfect. So it is not a function. So this one fails vertical line test. Vertical line test. So therefore, this one is not a function. Is that clear? But this one is a function as it passes vertical line test. So you can see here very clearly how we can identify from a graph that a given graph is a function or not. We'll have a small quiz based on this. Now let's talk about ordered pairs. So relations normally are given names. Let's say we give it a name as A, for example, right? So the ordered pair is being written here. We say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now this ordered pair, every element 
in our domain, right, the x values are related with only 1 in y. So this is a function. So this qualifies for a function. We say it is a function. Now let's take another example n which is not a function. So in this form I could write as 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3. Now here what you notice is that 1 is repeated. So if we have a list of ordered pairs and if we have repetition of the x values, the independent terms, the domain elements, in that case it is not a function. Perfect. Since you see that 1 is linked with 2 and also with 3 and the other element the ordered pair 2 is linked with 3. That is okay. But here 1 is linked with 2 and 3 and therefore it is not a function. Is that clear to you? Perfect. So that is how we identify whether the given relation is a function or not a function. Let's take an example of an equation. If I write x plus y equals to 10, it is a function. But if I write x plus y square equals to 10, then it is not a function. So in any equation, if I have y squared, do you see this part here? So that makes it just a relation, not a function. Since if you isolate this, what do you get? You will get here y is equal to 10 minus x and then square root. And whenever you do square root, you do plus and minus. And therefore, it is not a function. Is that clear to you? So, I have given you examples of each kind. How to figure out from a graph, ordered pair, or an equation, whether it is function or not a function. Correct? Now, I will take with you. Another example, we'll talk about mapping diagram in the quiz. I started with the mapping diagram, so I'll leave this for a quiz. The others are clear, right? So let's take some more examples and let's see if you have really understood this topic. So here is one of the examples for you. You need to determine which of the following relations are functions. We are given actually five options here. A relation can be represented in the form of words given here in A in a set form shown here as ordered pairs and in the form of equations, right? There are other forms like table and mapping diagram which you already know. Now I'd like you to pause the video and answer out of this which ones are functions and which are not functions. The first one here the relation between students age and shoe size. So if you make a table with age and shoe size of students in a class for example then you can say well age 16 shoe size you could get like 7, 8, 7, 9 right different. So for the same age there are many shoe sizes so this is not a function. clear. B. What we see here is 1, 2, 0, 1, 1, 3, 2, 3. These ordered pairs in a set is a relation. However, 1 is being repeated. So 1 is being repeated. It is linked with 2 and also with 3. So 1 is linked with 2 and also with 3 and therefore this is also not a function. clear. The next one here is y square equals to 2x minus 1. Now I could isolate y and write y as equal to square root of 2x minus 1. Now that gives you plus and minus. That, that means for different values of x I could have more than one value of y. Perfect. So if I take x 
equals to 3, right? If I write x equals to 3, I get two y values of y. So y is equal to plus minus 3 times 2 is 6, 6 minus 1 is 5, plus minus square root 5. So this input of 3 gives rise to two outputs. Therefore, it is again not a function, correct? So it is not a function. Let me write not a function. Is it clear to you? D and E are also forms of equation and here what we really have is x equals to minus 1 and here we have an equation which says y equals to 1. Now one of these is a function. Now the question for you is which of these is a function and then you have to explain why. Perfect. Okay. Just uh, to simplify this question or represent it in the form of a graph, I am going to show both. So when I say x is equal to minus 1, it basically means that it's a vertical line. right? So this is the line which is x equals to minus 1. So x has got just one value. And y could be any value in the whole domain right so so the range here is all real numbers x equals to minus 1 as you can see the other line here is y equals to 1 now y equals to 1 is a horizontal line correct okay? so this line is y equals to 1 out of these which ones is a function so clearly this is a function if i draw a vertical line it only intersects at one point so if this one is a function how about this? Well, a vertical line test fails. There are infinite points, so it is not a function. Is that clear? Perfect. So I hope with this, you have understood most of the concepts about functions. And now, it is time for us to take a quiz. You can take a short break here, and then get ready for the quiz. Here is our first very important test question. Question number one. Consider the mapping diagram of a relation to answer. This is the mapping diagram for you. Is this a function? Write domain and range. How many elements are in domain and in range? What type of relation is it? Represent the relation as a set of ordered pairs. Perfect. You can pause the video, answer the question. Now this is sometimes the very first question in your test paper. Now what students miss out is the direction of arrow and there you make an error. So here input element is kind of like this and the output is shown on the other side since the arrows are directed from the set on the right to the set on the left. Do you see that part? So, so that is a word of caution, right? So look carefully. Functions is a very easy topic when you read it, but the test questions could be tricky. Perfect. So that is the first caution to you. So some of you might have got this wrong. Otherwise, it is a straightforward question. Now let's look at from input on the right side and output on the left side. So this set is having all the elements which represents domain and this is the range. So this is domain for us. And that represents the range. Do you get it? Now, 